Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Best laid plans and everything. Trying to do as many things at once with single video clips. And for me, it's getting complicated, but for you, you just see the end bit. But um, I wanted to do a Holy Clay Pots update, yes. And because I've only got one table at the moment, I also want to water them. I can't do both if you see what I mean. <laughs> well, until I get my second table, which is in hand, next time I see my daughter, I'll have my other table, and then I've got one place to water and a second place to film. But the film clips I want to do today, um, I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone. So each plant that I film from now on, I want to try and do the clip for the start of season updates which is a special clip, yeah? But it can be part of another clip, rather than doing these separately, you know, if, you, if you see what I mean. But um, obviously the plants look best without that tatty backdrop <laughs> with all the junk next to the grow room. So what I thought I'd do is, so that I can get on with my watering and not get my cloth soaking wet, I've pinned the cloth up to the outside of the greenhouse. <laughs> Well, I just hope it don't rain or get windy, otherwise it's uh, uh, not going to work. But that gives me a place here to film the small amounts with a black backdrop. I've just noticed a real downside. I'm in the shot. I've now got a reflection that I don't normally have because of the black cloth. Um, but then in most of these shots are going to be close-in shots anyway, you know, like that. I'd rather not be in them, I must admit. Yeah, I can do them at an angle. I'll, I'll worry about that. If I'm in it, so be it. I haven't got time to muck about with 210 orchids to flip in film. And I want to try and do them as I go along, rather than a separate thing. So that, that, that's the idea today. Um, bit of maintenance before I start. I've just picked this orchid up to film it. Yeah, I'll have to water these separately or I'm going to get water everywhere at the moment, which I don't want to do. But I just had a quick look at the base of this one and hopefully the camera can pick that up. But there's signs of some scale starting up again at the base of this plant. Yeah, there's a bad bit there. Yeah, but they're on that plant. There's distinct good evidence that scale are really getting hold at the base of that plant. So I'm going to try something slightly different. Um, because of the speed. Um, I've got my hydrogen peroxide out, so wherever I can see some scale, they're going to get a dose of that, yeah, before I water it. Now this one's just been sprayed. You can see it's already dry, so I can now get on and water that, hoping that the majority of what I've sprayed is dead. And if I miss some, I'll do it next time. But I don't want these scale getting up onto the leaves, which at the moment they're not. But what I also noticed is because of where this plant has been sat, I thought, why are those leaves wet? They're not wet. This is happy sap that's dripped from blooms above the leaves. Now, although strictly speaking that does no harm, it's a sticky substance. So it could clog up pores on the leaves for a start. And in addition to that, it can attract pests. They love that stuff. <laughs> I mean, I haven't got ants in here, but if I had ants in here, they'd be all over that like a rash. So I'd rather it wasn't there. So I've just got some clean RO water and a little cotton wool pad. Yeah, and one-handed this won't be very easy, but that'll just take that off. Yeah, and um, there is potential even with happy sap remaining on leaves to even form a basis for some bacterial infections so it's better if it's just not there yeah so just a little bit of maintenance before I start as I say that's not so easy to do with one hand but that's just clean RO water so <coughs> excuse me it <coughs> won't leave any um, residual calcium or anything on the leaves which can certainly happen if you use tap water and that's just clean those three leaves off as I said that's could have been from the blooms on this plant because this has only just finished blooming. It bloomed here and here. So <laughs> you sort of think, well, if that happy sap's there, why isn't it here? So the happy sap on this plant probably came from another plant above it at the time. Anyway, that's that cleaned off. Yeah, no sticky left now. So just a bit of routine maintenance as I go along. Um, 
I've always said if you've had scale, the chances are you've still got them somewhere. They're still lurking and the idea is to never let them get out of hand. So literally get on them, literally. As soon as you see the flipping things, get at them. Don't leave them till the weekend or next time you water because where there might have been half a dozen, you could end up with several hundred and they could have spread to the next plant. The little crawlers are mobile. They really will, you know, move from plant to plant. The limpet-like bits don't move, but that's the place where the eggs and the next generation are. So you need to get at them. Um, they are a nuisance and they are very difficult to eradicate completely. And recently I've found that my Provado Ultimate Bug Killer, the ready mix form in a sprayer, ready to go, is not doing the job. Because the base of these plants was sprayed with that stuff not that long ago. Now that's supposed to be a contact killer and a systemic. Well if you use it on the base of the plant it's not going to work that well systemically. You need to do the leaves, top side and underside and the pseudo bulbs and as many roots as you can see. Get the stuff into the plant. But quite honestly recently that stuff just doesn't seem to be as effective as it used to be. And if that's true, I'm left with next to nothing that actually works, which is a trifle worrying, to say the least. You might have to try and get some stuff from uh, other countries and sneak it in. Because you, you there's so little left in the UK that you're allowed to have that uh, fighting a losing battle there. But yeah, I thought I'd try the hydrogen peroxide because it uh, effectively deactivates incredibly quickly, so it shouldn't damage the plant. Um, and we'll see if that does it. But again, that's probably not going to knock them down with one spray. So um, I'll be looking at these every time I water from now on. And um, to give them a quick spray with the hydrogen peroxide takes no time at all. I'm happy to do that. As I said, the systemic just doesn't seem to be working like it used to. So uh, that's that one done. This is BLC Young Min Orange and this currently has 11 leaved pseudo bulbs and a couple of leafless ones at the back, those are the old seedling ones. And um, it's not long finished blooming at the start of the season, bloomed well. And I can see a new growth here. This is one lead, this is just bloomed. There's a new eye just pushing on there. Possibility of another one there and the other lead is round this side of the plant um, and the base is swelling but the new growth isn't showing yet. Um, that should push out a minimum of two new growths. I'm hoping for more. Well, this is Cattleya Angel Heart and most of the older leaves on this plant were as I got them and then they're, they're not brilliant leaves on the older part of the plant. These two have got creases on them these two have got marks on them, these two aren't too bad, that's got some marks on it. These marks are dry, they're not spreading or anything. And this one's got um, chlorosis elements on it, this particular bulb. But all of those leaves and all of those bulbs were prior to me getting it, that's, that's as I got it in. Um, in addition to that, it had two leads on it, which was what I was interested in. But one of the new growths on this particular lead had broken off just before I bought it. Now what I'm hoping for on this one is that that eye is going to push. Where that one was damaged, that one could push on. Otherwise that lead is lost there. The other lead here, um, this growth here is mine. And that one did bloom not long ago and it's now pushing up a lovely strong new growth from that lead. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six leaved bulbs, most of which have bloomed, and at the moment a single large strong new growth. This is a very large plant, this one. It's difficult to get the whole thing in shot. So that's that one. This one's a no ID Cattleya um, and it's one of two. I split a plant in two. So we'll call this plant one and it's easily recognised by the roots that decided to climb out of the pot 
and then I changed their mind and <laughs> sent them back round there and back down into the pot. I literally bent them round there and they've carried on growing so that's good. Now this particular piece of the plant, um, this has bloomed on every one of these growths on here and it's recently finished blooming on the latest growth which is this one here. Yeah, so what I'm looking for on this one is a new growth in this area. Two would be good, but I doubt if I'll get two. There's a possibility that I might push, but um, it's quite a long way back on the plant, so an unknown. But that's the state of play on that one. Um, we've effectively got five leaved pseudo bulbs, and the leaves are in quite good nick, they're not bad, and um, waiting for new growth on that one. Right, this is the other split of the um, no ID Catlia. This one's currently in bloom, um, looking good. As far as the plant's concerned, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five older pseudo bulbs, all of which except one have bloomed. And um, this is easily identified from plant number one. We'll call this plant number two simply because it's hanging over sideways my bad potting basically <laughs> um, but the latest growth is currently in bloom um, the stake is only there to push the bulb back and hold the blooms upright so that I can see them um, but it can stay there at the moment um, this one has no signs of new growths at the moment but um, they will come from this area here um, probably as soon as the blooms are finished which should be within the next week or so so that's, that's that one. Again, a Catlia, no ID. This is my um, Evanagara apple blossom, currently in bloom, and the fragrance is just starting today. Whoa! Freesias. Strong smell of freesias. The older part of this plant got sunburnt, so it's not looking so good. That was down to me, keeping it too near the glass during the winter time with no shading whatsoever. That's the result. This does not like the same sort of light levels that other Catlias like, just a bit lower. Not much, but a bit. Um, four old pseudo bulbs, all of which have bloomed with some tatty leaves as stated. The latest growth is blooming currently. That's a good strong fat bulb on there. And um, that will be the area where the new growths come. And I'm hoping for both of those eyes to push and get a double lead. Double lead, double lot of blooms. So that's, that's the plan for that one, but the plant will do as it pleases. All I can do is encourage it. So, um, yep, yeah, not bad that one. Now this is my um, giant Lelia purpurata. Um, and this is almost impossible to get in shot. This is an incredibly large plant. Got from Equigenera back in Malvern, and I'm always a bit dubious about getting plants from them because they're bare-rooted. But this one, when I got it, um, it actually had two new growths showing. Um, and as a consequence, I took the risk, despite having a poor root system. But these are those two new growths, now fully developed with no sign of spiking at the moment. Come on! <laughs> um, but the current state of play with the plant is we've got six leaved bulbs and we have a new growth on both of the leads pushing on nicely at the moment and it has developed a good root system while in my possession, shall we say. Um, Unfortunately, this one's going to have to come out of this pot because it's going to reach the side of the pot very soon. And if you look at the back end of the plant, that is of no use whatsoever. I potted it like that to be able to grab hold of it with a wire because it is incredibly lopsided. So that, unfortunately, is going to have to come out of that pot and get set back and set upright, which will probably happen later in the year. Um, it's a good root system. It's well attached to the pot, so there will be some root damage. So the ideal time to repot this is when some more new roots start forming with those new growths um, and then just get it back in the pot but that, that's the state of play with that one as I say it's very difficult to get in shot it is so big this is Lelia anseps and despite this being quite a small plant it's actually bloomed twice for me um, it bloomed here for the first time quite a while ago 
It then produced these two new growths, which I didn't think would bloom because they were a little undersized if you compare them with the oldest bulb there. But nonetheless, they both bloomed at the same time, so I was well pleased with that. So that's currently got four leaved bulbs, all of which have bloomed, and a leafless bulb um, was there when I got it. And um, both of these leads that have recently bloomed should both push out at least one new growth each. They're not doing it yet, but there are distinct swellings at the base, so those new growths should come soon. And um, that, that can stay in its pot, basically. It's not worth disturbing that root system. Just let the next two growths go wherever they want. Um, so that's that one. I'm, I'm pleased that that one's bloomed so well on what is quite a small plant, really. Now this is a rescue cattleya, basically, that I, I now class as rescued, as opposed to being rescued, because it's recovered reasonably well. Um, some of the older leaves are bad. Um, I mean, I nearly lost it, so I'm pleased that it's hanging in there. Um, this is um, a, a sophro cattleya, which is probably just a cattleya now anyway, rose pixie pinafore. And um, the recovery element of it is that this was a reasonable new growth, although the leaf did have some markings on it, but they didn't get any worse. Um, so that wasn't a bad new growth to start the recovery process, and that lead has now got another new growth coming, and it has produced some good roots. It's two plants. This is the other piece round here, and um, at the moment I don't see any, any signs of new growths on that one and that one's got hardly any roots on it. And if this piece fails I don't mind too much because this piece is doing okay. So um, this produced, this other piece produced this new growth, slightly distorted leaf, but um, nonetheless for the plant not a bad size. So that now needs to produce another new growth to get it going and then effectively we should have a secondary growth coming up here and this one pushing on here with some roots to support it. So that's how that one looks. Well, this is turning out to be a right faff but I'm going to continue doing it because I've started. Basically I've just cleared off all the holy clay pots off of that shelf. Now normally they would have been watered and then just put straight back again. But because I'm filming on that table, <laughs> and that's the only place I've got to film any sense, I've now got to get the water out and water them before I can put them back, and then clear the table off again to start filming another shelf. So it is a bit of a faff, but um, quite honestly, I haven't got anything else to do today. It's not like I'm using up valuable time. So I'll plod away at it. I'll get this lot watered now. As far as the scale was concerned, one of those was showing quite bad signs of them getting a hold. One other plant had some signs, not much, and they may have even been dead. We got sprayed with the hydrogen peroxide anyway, and all the others look clean. So it's not like I've got an outbreak, but one particular plant did have quite a few, and that one I'll make sure is at the front of the shelf so that I can keep my eye on it. There is a problem with scale if you kill them. They don't necessarily go away. So um, I know for a fact that with scale, I've probably killed the same scale half a dozen times. <laughs> and they're long since dead, but because I can still see them, they get treated again. So what I might have to start doing is getting the cotton wool bud, you know, with some alcohol and gently wipe the ones I can see off so that I don't end up killing them multiple times. But I'd rather kill them multiple times than let them live. So I'm happy to do that normally, but yeah, I think I need to start cleaning them, the bodies up so that I get a clean start. That way, if anything new shows, I'll see it straight away. So it does make sense. <laughs> but not today, I've still got quite a bit to do and it, it's a plodding day because of the filming. I've just got to plod away at what I'm doing and um, take regular breaks and all that stuff. And see the coffee getting hit hard today. This is one of two rescue cattleyas, both the same, both pieces of a long since gone mother plant. 
Um, this one is recovering, but it is a slow progress. Um, the single new growth sticking up in the middle there. You can see the size of the bulbs and the leaves that it should have produced, and that's all it's managed to do. But it has managed to do that, and it has produced some roots. So it's on the road to recovery, but it's very slow progress. And this is the second piece of the same plant. Um, in effect being recovered and slow progress. This is the latest new growth, very undersized, um, relatively poor quality, but it did produce that in the winter. And again, it has produced some roots. So it's uh, on the slow road to recovery. Now this is a community pot full basically, I think there's three, maybe four plants in here, but because they were all the same, um, I decided to put them in a large community pot, and this is Lelio Catlia Pradit Spots. Um, several pieces in here, I do see some signs of new roots in places, um, but it's struggling to get going because it was disturbed and some of the pieces really didn't have very good roots at all. So they may not all make it, but nonetheless, um, some parts of it are looking good. There are signs of some new growths in places. Um, this one's going to be difficult to see the progress on because the progress could be in many places. But I do have one reasonable new growth coming out here that's very visible. And there are some good roots pushing out in places. So uh, we'll see how that one progresses. Now this is Encyclia prismatocarpa, a non-bloomer for me. Um, struggled badly with K, uh, scale in the past. And these are its latest two new growths both of which have some slight leaf damage due to scale when those were very young. So I'm just checking to see if that is. No, it's not. Okay, so that's what the leaf markings are. They're not going to go away. That's just damage when those growths were incredibly young. My fault for not getting at them. Nonetheless, they produce, it's produced two good sized bulbs. That's what I was after. And there is actually a sheath in one of them. Now, whether that's actually going to bloom or not, I don't know, because it did that last time, produced a sheath and didn't bloom. It's got a sheath on every, every bulb. Um, so effectively, this was rescued. The old part of the plant was taken off, and this is what I've got left. And the only time I've ever seen this is in bloom is on very, very large plants. So I don't expect this to bloom. But what I do expect it to do in the near future is start some more new growths. It's effectively got two leads, so I'd expect two new gro growths somewhere down the line. Now this little plant I'm expecting to take off like a rocket. In the near future, um, it's got several leads on it one here and then another one out this side. Um, it could produce new growth from absolutely anywhere. It's got a name about eight foot long. Catlia, little lemon drops crossed with Catlitonia, why not? And uh, it's a relatively re recent acquisition. But if its root growth is anything to go by, its new growths when it produces them this time should be big and strong. Um, the others were matured in the winter. So uh, that's a nice little plant. I'm hoping it's not going to get huge. I'm hoping it stays as a reasonably small catlia. That would be good. Now this is the only catlia type I've got that's sulking at the moment. It's um, just sitting there. It's not growing. It has produced a few new roots in the winter, but there's no sign of new growths at the base of the plant yet. Nonetheless, they should appear in sometime down the line, but it's having a sulk. Uh, it's just, some just do that. It's got a long name, Cyan Yu Red Pearl Red Dragonfly. Yay, I've got a red one. <laughs> well, it's not going to bloom on anything it's got at the moment, so I need some new growths, and at the moment I am doing nothing more than patiently waiting. 
And this is, a, at the moment, a bit of a tatty looking plant. Um, it's grown its bulbs, or been allowed to grow its bulbs, in all different directions and fall over sideways and just do that sort of thing. Um, when I got it, there was very little sign of life. Um, this is Catlia harrisoniana volcano queen, crossed with harrisoniana binot. Um, and its new growth round here aborted, it just rotted. And then it decided to do something a little odd, although I have heard of it happening before. It then started to grow again. So having just rotted off, it's now producing new ro roots from out of where the rotted growth was and a new growth off the top. Now it's a bit wobbly in its pot, but there's also root roots coming out of the older roots. So I've always said, don't cut your old cattleya roots off until they are totally collapsed and definitely dead. Because you can see that's an old root and it's branching. But don't hack them off. And there's some other roots in a similar vein to that down in the pot, which are probably doing exactly the same thing out of sight. So uh, it's, it's sort of recovering. And this is strange, but um, it's a new growth with new roots. And that's sort of... Um, all you can expect from a new acquisition. So although that's a tatty looking plant, hopefully one day it will look better. Not for a few days yet though. Now this is another recent, relatively recent acquisition with a name eight foot long. It's um, Xin Fong, Little Sun, Young Min, Golden Boy. Got that? <laughs> Currently in bloom and it's in bloom on two out of the three latest growths and the other growth did actually bloom. Those blooms have gone over now. So in theory this has got three leads and should produce at least three new growths. So I'm hoping for quite big things out of this. It's currently in one of the smaller holy clay pots. If it does start to produce three new growths I will lift it out of this gently and put it in a bigger one. It's not strictly speaking a repot, it's a pot on, because the bark that's in there is not very old, so I don't need to get it all off. Any that falls off, okay, can be replaced, but otherwise it just needs to go in a bigger pot to allow for the next set of new growths, which in theory should be at least three. But yeah, that, that's, that is a good plant. As cattleyas go, most of the leaves, apart from the really old ones, are looking good and um, very attractive blooms. Well pleased with that one. That's performed well, seeing as I haven't had it long. So, uh, good one. And the last of the Cattleya types, this is just a no ID hybrid. Um, and this had colour troubles in the winter, shall we say. Um, lovely blooms. The older bulbs in the winter got themselves a distinct purple tinge. Doesn't seem to have done the leaves any harm, and some of the others have a very slight purple tinge that was worse than that. And as the longer days have come on, and the way I'm feeding now, it seems to be correcting itself. So if that's bright light that's done that in the winter time, given that there was no shading, um, with the shading now, maybe new growths will actually come out clean. Now this one had a problem because it aborted a new growth, but it did promptly put a push out another one the other side, and that's the one that's currently in bloom, and by far the largest bulb, by quite a bit. So that's, that's more like the size it should be, is the, the, that bulb that's currently in bloom. Um, so that's the base of the plant. There are several eyes in various places, but which ones decide to grow or not, we'll have to wait and see. But there will definitely be a new growth on the latest growth, probably once it's finished blooming. But we'll see how we go. So just a no ID Cattleya. But nonetheless, lovely attractive blooms. Now this is Bulbophyllum Elizabethan Buckleberry and it's effectively a community pot. I had three back bulbs which all pushed out new growths and a plant. So basically that plant got split in two because it was overhanging the pot and the three back bulbs, all the pieces were just put in here. 
to make a community pot. And at the moment I can see one, two, three new growths, three current new growths on this plant as it stands now. I don't think there's any others. And um, basically it hasn't long been in this pot, so its roots are still trying to get established, which is, um, you know, a process that hopefully will speed up a bit now we've got the uh, warmer days and uh, the longer light and everything. So we'll see how that one looks towards the end of the year. But at the moment, it's a community pot establishing itself. Now this is Phalaenopsis Zengming Min Brontosaurus. Well, it's had some problems during the winter on its older leaves, but um, the newer leaves, although a bit smaller, are at least looking reasonably healthy. Um, this one's coming out of this pot and um, going on a mount. Um, it's, a, it's a good size to go on a mount. It's never going to be a huge plant, and um, its flower spikes are relatively short and everything, so I think this one will do okay on a mount. And quite honestly, I need the pot for something which to me is more important. <laughs> although I keep some Phalaenopsis, um, they're not my favourites, although out of my Phalaenopsis this is one of my favourites. So I don't want to lose the plant, but I can look after it better on a mount. So uh, we'll see how that one goes by the end of the year. We've got two, four, six, seven leaves at the moment. Um, we might well end up with less at the end of the year because certainly that oldest one down here looks like it's not long for the world. Um, but then it should grow some new ones too, so we'll see how we get on with that one. Okay, so that's a Holy Clay Pots update. Um, assorted bunch of characters. Everything's on the go today. We've got the large circulating fans on. The extractor fans on up here and the inlet fan doing its job bringing in some cooler air and because that reduces my humidity both the foggers are on the go as well you know, I have to keep my eye on the water levels on days like this because it can drop quite dramatically anyway um, hopefully in amongst those clips I've just done as a holy clay pots update are places where I can take those snapshots um, to keep to the end of the year to show what the plants were like now and the clips I've done today will form part of my start of season updates when I get to that section. Um, when I get to that section obviously to you they're going to look, you'll have seen them before in this particular video but my start of season updates last year and the year before got watched for a long time throughout the year so quite a few people may be watching those because of their title that didn't necessarily see this video but um, that's how it will go so uh, now I've got some work to do on the computer see you next time bye for now